What's up guys? Drew here, back with another product review. Actually two product reviews. Today we're going to talk about the Kaiser Aero Frames and some undercover 76 millimeter power blading wheels. These are an 84A. All right, so some first impressions. Uh, I got a chance to skate these for about an hour. Let's start with the frames. So these Kaiser Aero Frames, if you don't know anything about them, they're aluminum base with these little plastic grind walls that they put on there. Right off the bat, if you're gonna be skating a lot of ledges and stuff, these are not the frames for you. They do have this plastic wall and it does come down at sort of an angle. So at the bottom, you get a nice space from the bolts, but it's only about a millimeter or two. So you're gonna grind these things out in no time if you're hitting the concrete really hard. That being said, these things are like rail magnets. Because of the area of the frame where there's no contact and the fact that they're beveled out at the edge, as soon as you lock onto one, man, it's harder to get your foot off of it than it is to get onto it. And they slide fantastic, right out of the box. Another cool thing about these is that they are the same on both sides. So if you get one side grinded down quite a bit, just flip around and do the same to the other side. So these wheels, I opted for the 76 millimeter. The frame actually fits up to an 80 millimeter. And the whole reason that I went with the 76 millimeter was that I was a bit nervous about an 80 millimeter. Uh, it had been described to me as more akin to ice skating than to like aggressive skating, which is what I'm used to. And there was sort of that Bambi on the ice feel when I first got on them a little bit. Your knees and ankles are gonna have a tendency to bow one way or the other more than you would like them to. But really after about 15 minutes, it's not really a big deal. Um, I think I could have gotten the 80 millimeters and been fine. I'm probably gonna get 80 millimeters next time. I will say that the sensation of riding on a big wheel uh, eight down at that, I'm used to Annie Rocker, is pretty fantastic, man. They are so fast. Like it's so fun to just roll around. You don't have to even try half the time, you just go. You can also turn on a dime, which um, hopefully I'm gonna be getting into some more of like the shop task type tricks where they're taking like the ice skating three turns and gazelles and stuff like that and doing them on inline skates. I'm super pumped to get started on that. That was about half the reason I even got the setup was because I wanted to start getting into that stuff. And given that I've rolled around on them for about an hour, they don't seem to be wearing down that much. There was a little bit of wear on one of my wheels, and I think it was mainly just from stopping, you know, dragging it behind me. But man, most of them, I've been riding some pretty tough concrete and they still have the little line in the top of them. So that's a good sign, especially for an 84A wheel. I was a little bit concerned about that as well. So that's it, first impressions. I'm in love with both. I'm excited to see how I feel about them a couple months from now. All right, dudes, this is the second part of the review of these down here. We got some Kaiser Air power blading frames and some undercover 76 millimeter 84A wheels in the full profile. So as you can see, these are on different skates than they were last time. If you wanna see a review of them, uh, check there or there. Wherever I put it, we'll see. So I've had these for a while now, probably almost two months, I would say. And I've been skating them quite a bit. Um, I figured out that every time I go to my rec skating spot, this kind of nature trail with like a nice bike path through it, I end up doing about 10 miles. And I would say I've been going there about two or three times a week. And the wheels, I'm not gonna lie and say that they look new because they don't, but they still look really, really good. So whatever kind of urethane they're using in these, like it, it's tough, man. It was actually frustrating for me because um, I learned that you can get like the wizard kind of natural rocker by just flipping your wheels when you rotate them. So in other words, don't do the one, three, two, four, crisscrossy thing that makes them all wear evenly. You just take the front wheel and you flip it around and you take the second wheel and you flip it around. You take the third wheel and you flip it around. And after you do this so many times, you develop this really nice 
natural rocker. And I'll show you what that means. There's gonna be another video on rockering here or here. Okay, courtesy of the music stand that one of the colleges I went to was nice enough to let me steal. The natural rocker is when you lean forward on the boot, these three wheels touch the ground and roll and the back one spins freely. When you lean back on the boot, this one spins freely and the other three roll. Isn't that amazing? Like, how is that even scientifically possible? I don't know, but it is. And it's really, really tight. So yeah, I was trying to get that rocker happening. And dude, it took forever. Like, just now am I starting to get a good, solid, natural rocker. Forever, like the case was, I would start to get it a little bit, and then I would rotate the wheels and like it would be gone. And the next time I rotated them, like it would be slightly less of a bummer to rotate them. And then just after, again, like six weeks and probably, I mean, by that math, that's like well over a hundred miles on these fucking wheels. I'm finally getting like a good natural rocker on them. Again, it's pretty tight. Like anybody that switches to a flat rocker setup from an anti-rocker setup, that's really what you want. Um, the, the absolutely flat, like it's, it's cool and all. I mean, you can turn a little bit easier and go faster, you know, and that's nice. But the amount of control that you get with the three wheels touching at a time thing, like it's it's crazy. Like it's not quite like being on ice, but it's definitely more analogous to that. Like your feet just have this sort of lateral freedom. So long story short, these wheels wear really slow, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's it's a great thing eventually, but it's pain in the ass at first. Also, a little bit on the profile. You know, the reason that I got this frame and these wheels was because I wanted to learn to do like the wizardy type tricks, like, you know, the the gazelles and the three turns and, you know, the, all that stuff. And a little bit of slalom in there too. And uh, I really like the pivot turns. I've been working on those quite a bit lately. I think they're also called compasses. I don't know, they're cool. So me being an aggressive skater said, okay, I'm gonna get the fattest wheel profile that I can. Cause when I jump off shit, like I want that nice secure landing and I like doing toe rolls and heel rolls a lot. So, you know, obviously let's pick out something conducive to that. So I got the full profile and it's, it's full. And it's not quite as, full as like an aggressive profile, but I mean, it's way, way fatter than like a speed profile. And, um, you know, for some things it's pretty nice, like slaloming, like doing this thing, you know, when you're just kind of shifting your weight on your heels. Yeah, you can really do that on any surface, um, even if it's a little bit wet and you're gonna grip and you're gonna pull and yeah, it's it's awesome. The, the shitty thing about it, and this is, Part of them being 84A2, because I think this is like probably a, on the softer side of 84A. Um, I know that like hydrogen wheels and the Seba Deluxe and stuff are 85, and from what I've heard from everybody, there definitely is a big difference between like what Seba calls an 85A and what Rollerblade calls an 85A. So I would probably put these like even on the softer side of those. But you know, when you're trying to do those quick turnarounds and stuff, it has a lot to do with controlling your edges, getting on one side or the other. And these wheels aren't really conducive to that at all. Um, I can still do the gazelles on them. Um, more often than not, they're a little bit sketchy, which realistically is my fault. I'm sure a ton of people could put these on and gazelle the shit out of them, but it's certainly not doing me any favors. So I think next time I'm probably gonna go with like the the bullet profile, you know, just kind of halfway in between like the full and the speed, probably closer to the full. And I think I'm gonna step it up with the hardness because any sort of slide stop whatever is like fucking impossible in these. On a wood floor, I could hockey stop slide for about two inches if I got going real fast. These things are just grippy as hell, man. Like I said, like they're 
they're not made to slide at all. They're made to keep you in direct control the whole time. And so if that's what you're looking for, awesome. Like I can't recommend this profile and hardness enough. If you would like to do any sort of sliding whatsoever, it's not gonna work for you. It's just not. All right, now let's finish up talking about the frames. It's hard to gauge how well a frame slides just based on sole tricks and stuff because that's really only like half of your contact and it's probably where 40% or less of your weight's gonna be because most of the weight's gonna be like on the bottom of your foot. You just sort of get frame contact by virtue of, you know, the lean over and stuff like that. Locking on, as it were. But they sl seem to slide pretty good. Uh, I think this is the same plastic as the, the Kaiser Fluids, which, you know, everybody says those slide well and you know these are no exception i would say there might be a chance on some objects they would be a little bit faster just because of this channel right here where they don't touch um, this frame was kind of geniusly designed to have multiple stages of not touched them so depending on i mean sometimes on bigger objects you can slide extra super fucking fast because your points of contact are minuscule also the speed of an aluminum frame is a tangible, quantifiable thing. It's just so much better than writing on a plastic frame, and I can't really describe it beyond that. It's just something that you have to experience. Uh, they're faster, they respond better, um, they're just great. One complaint I do have about these is, I don't think, these don't actually have frame spacers in them. The aluminum is just kinda bent out in key areas. And theoretically, that would be fine, but I can only really like observe it from this perspective, like just looking at the wheels and free spinning them. And I have taken out wheels and switched them to other positions, so I've, I've negated that possibility. But some of these positions just spin a lot faster than the others. And I think what that has to do with is the spacers where they're bent out, there's not the degree of accuracy that there needs to be to provide equal pressure, lateral pressure on all the wheels exactly where they need to be. So some spots just rub a little bit more than others. You know, with relatively equal pressure across the whole thing, it's, it's just a noticeable thing. Some of them spin faster than the others. So I would like to see them move to either regular bearing spacers that have like a better degree of accuracy to them or just kind of up their machine chops a little bit and maybe give these things like a laser level or something before they ship them out. In my opinion, they're still the best 80 millimeter frame option out there. Uh, it's weird, I don't see a lot of people talking about these and I mean, they're awesome. Like in theory and practice, they're awesome. I see mostly people getting like um, power blading advanced level, you know, one or two or whatever. And I know that the level threes have like a little bit of an age block in there. They've kind of disappeared now that the ground control big is out. Like there's no reason to get the Kaiser level three, but there's no reason to really get the Kaiser level one either because the Kaiser arrow is clearly fucking better in like every tangible way. And there's no reason to get that ground controlled 6,000 whatever frame because the Kaiser arrow is better in like every single way. So in my opinion, if you want a big wheel setup and you want to do groove tricks, bigs are your frames. If you want a bigger wheel setup and you don't want to do groove tricks, there's no reason not to get the Kaiser Arrows. It's an aluminum frame with plastic grind walls that's totally symmetrical. What the fuck else do you want out of, out of anything? I mean, really, that's, that's awesome. On the last note, I do wish they were rockerable but there's not a frame out there that has a rocker that functions the way that I would like for it to function. So, whatever. All right, that's it. Go buy them if you got money.